Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Was motivated to start a fire this morning. Don't know why. Chilly, not as cold as it's been the last couple of days, but I don't know. It just felt like a thing to come out here and start me a fire this morning and have me a cup of coffee. I know that there's a lot of stuff going on right now that sounds pretty scary. I've covered it, many others have covered it. The cyber stuff is certainly probably for a lot of you the foremost thing in your mind. Um, the, the conflict there in the Middle East between Israel and Gaza looks like it's getting ready to expand. Uh, Israel is on the verge, whether it'll happen or not, who knows, but at least on the verge of going full on engagement with Lebanon and Hezbollah. Um, Yemen, uh, the, the Houthis in Yemen, they're, they're, they're becoming more aggressive. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, reports were that the United States was meeting with certain allies in the Middle East uh, to determine how to wage an attack, you know, to basically, I think, get permission. Like, hey, you know, if we go in and we start attacking them, are you going to be okay with that? And then it came out uh, yesterday afternoon or evening that um, they did a missile strike against a Norwegian oil tanker that was headed towards Israel and, and actually struck it. Uh, the thing seems to be there's, there's no injuries um, uh, or at least deaths, I think, uh, but it did catch fire. and There's video of that thing um, catching fire. Uh, of course, what's going on with, with Ukraine and Russia, uh, Zelensky's in town. Uh, meeting with Biden and, and other people trying to get more money. Um, I think everyone kind of realizes at this point that, that Ukraine is losing and they're not going to, it, it's becoming more admitted now. I mean, many of us have known this for a while, but it's at least now becoming more admitted that Ukraine cannot win this. And now they're saying that we're going to send a U.S. general over there to kind of help uh, Ukraine with their strategy. Um, <clears throat> We all know that they're either gonna they're either gonna lose, uh, or U.S. slash NATO troops are gonna have to get involved. I, I I don't really see any other way. I mean, more directly involved than they've already been. And then there's just there's all the stuff here, you know. There, there's protests everywhere. Uh, there's there's literally thousands, over ten thousand a day at times coming across, probably more than 10,000 a day coming across the border illegally. Um, there's video of up in Chicago that they've got 3,000 of them just crammed into a, a, a warehouse and they're, they're running out of space. They don't know where to put all these illegals. And Texas is saying that they're getting ready to ship 70,000 outside of their state. And it's, it's just, it's compounding and it's getting worse. And, Honestly, I wish I had really good news. I mean, the only good news that I can, can I really think of is just continuing a, a positive outlook, not allowing these things that are happening to get us down, not to, not to feel like that we're defeated or that we're hopeless, because that's absolutely not true. I mean, yes, the, the, the Great Reset Agenda 2030 is pushing forward probably harder than ever. I mean, they're, they're very aggressive on that. Uh, even though it's not always in the forefront of our vision or a peripheral view, um, it's definitely being pushed. But there, there are positive things that we can focus on, and that is the fact that, that we can overcome this. We, we know the end of the book and how it's written, uh, but we also know that we're going to go through tough times to get there. And, and so I, you know, I don't want to be so optimistic that, you know, everyone relaxes and thinks that it's, it's all going to be okay. It's in the end, it's going to be okay, but there's going to be a lot of not okays between now and then. And that's what we prepare for, right? Um, I got a, got a, um, text message last night, uh, from a, a close friend of mine and he's, he's not on YouTube or anything. So don't think that, but he's, he, he's kind of a big deal behind the scenes in a lot of kind of the, I don't even know what you call it anymore, freedom movement uh, or whatever. Uh, I don't want to mention his name because some of you would definitely know who he is. But anyways, uh, he received a, a contact. And, and I don't know if this is how 
valid this is. It's coming from a good, trusted source, but, you know, he could have gotten it from whoever. But it was a, a, a high-ranking, ret a retired high-ranking military officer that uh, is currently very involved uh, high up in the Republican Party. And um, he says that most of the people that, that he deals with are, are pretty certain that there's not going to be an election uh, this next year. Uh, maybe that's just some crazy conspiracy stuff, or maybe that confirms what a lot of you already think. <sighs> My gut, and that's all it is, is gut, okay? There's, there's nothing really backing this up other than gut. My gut tells me that the next 6 to 12 months are going to be crazy, and probably on the shorter end and the longer end, meaning that I don't think it's going to be between now and 12 months or even between now and six months that we're going to start seeing the crazy stuff. Um, there's a lot of people believe that uh, I've, I've been seeing online. There's a lot of theories out there that a major cyber attack is going to happen before the end of the year. Uh, a lot of people believe it's going to happen, that there's something, whether it's cyber attack or something else will happen, you know, after the first of the year, I, I think within the next three or four months, we're going to see a lot of major changes uh, and, and a lot of bad things happen. Now, th that's just that's just me thinking, okay? Not making any predictions. I could be wrong. I've been wrong in the past. I've been right a lot of times, but I've been wrong. Um, but I think it's I think it's getting to a pretty safe place to say that that we're going downhill pretty rapidly. And, and everything that they say that they're going to do or that their plans are, there's a lot of stuff that has to take place over the next year or two. And, and so we have, to, we have to realize that and realize that, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of in the home stretch, so to speak. Meaning that, you know, there's not a whole lot of time left to be getting things done that, that we need to do. There's not a whole lot of time left before things start getting probably so bad that <clears throat> I don't know that I don't know that we'll be able to do much more than just you know be in complete survival mode I mean we could have years before things get that bad but think of it this way <clears throat> if if you believe that we have years then you have to almost believe that all of their their plans this great reset agenda 2030 aren't going to happen or at least not going to happen in their timeline. And, and so far, most things are happening somewhat in their timeline. Um, so if, if, we, if we believe that stuff, then you have to know that at really the, the, the longest, it, it's two to three years, uh, you know, because if you read their plans, it, they have to, most of this stuff takes place and is set up before Agenda 2030. Agenda 2030, is the year that they want everything to be in this big, you know, kind of kumbaya kind of thing. So, I, I think we're going to have a, a rough year ahead of us. And preparations are things that, that you just need to be doing on a constant basis. And I think that, you know, yes, I can get on here and I can, I can remind you. I can point things out that you should probably have this or that just like many of you do in the comments. And, and that's a good thing because it, it, it sparks our, our memory or it gives us an idea. I mean, I, I've been doing this for years, long before I was ever on YouTube. And I still, to this day, will run across something, whether it's a video or an article or something like, you know what, I never thought of that. That's actually a pretty good idea. That makes sense. I should probably do that or have that or develop that skill or whatever. So, so there is still a, a beneficial side to that. And then it's also just the motivation. But I think most of us kind of have a good idea of what we should be doing. And I think that the, the big things that we should be doing are more kind of internal. I mean, the external things like skills and supplies, preps and stuff. Hopefully, a lot of you have really got that nailed down. I mean, sure, you're expanding, you're adding to it. But, you know, if something happened today, hopefully most of you have a decent thing amount of things set aside so that you're not you know completely helpless 
But I think what we really should be focusing on as a people right now is, is really the internal stuff. You know, getting our own strength, our grit, that, that mental fortitude down that, that we, we understand, not just that we're tough enough to handle it, because I think most of you are. Um, it, it's not just about being tough, it's about realizing that this is happening. Not, I'm preparing for the what ifs and maybe it'll happen someday. No, it, it's, it's happening. And, and once we come to that realization, it, it really changes our whole perspective in life. You know, <clears throat> we're not just casually making plans for the future without saying, okay, how does that fit within these parameters? Or, you know, we want to go on a vacation, but should we be going on a vacation at this time in this place because of what's going on? Maybe we should alter our plans. Um, it, you know, that kind of stuff. So there, there's that kind of realization. There's also the internal preparations of, of just that, that, that spiritual readiness, you know, building your relationship closer and closer and closer to God, the creator, Father Almighty, His Son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Um, getting that, that down to where you are, you're, 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 you're seeking His righteousness more and more fervently than you ever have before. Building your, your family ties, your family relationship, because, you know, when it all comes down to it, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be riding out the storm with your family. And if your family can't get along, if there's marital strife, if the children don't respect the parents, if the, the parents are irritated the children all the time, if there, there's all these complications that this modern world has, has really created and in a lot of ways uh, builds up. If, if, you, if you haven't fixed a lot of those problems and spent some quality time building the fam family relationship, then, then you're going to struggle. And, and then you also need to seriously be working on the relationships with people outside of your family but still in your circle you know your tribe your your whatever you call it you know your community your team your your mag uh, you need to be building those relationships uh, not just in the sense that you're planning and prepping together yes you should be doing that training planning prepping together figuring out plans of how you're going to mutually assist each other and come to each other's aid and all yes that kind of stuff but we really need to be building those bonds in, in those groups tighter because in the end, you know, you can have a, a group filled with knowledgeable people and people that are, are dedicated to the cause. But if they don't have a solid relationship, much like a family, well, it's 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 going to it's going to struggle. OK, your 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 group is going to struggle and it may even get to the point that it falls apart and if it falls apart after everything else has fallen apart well that's really really bad it's really bad you know the the doo-doos hit the fan and you know now your little mag all gets in a fight and falls apart and now it's everybody's just a lone wolf out on their own and possibly even out to get each other because they're so angry that that's a horrible horrible situation probably even more dangerous than if you are just a lone wolf out there on your own. And so um, work on building the relationships and the bonds within your group. Th these are the things I think that over the next year we really need to focus on. Yes, you still need to be focusing on food production and, and, and preparation and skills and, and you know maybe solar systems or, or whatever it is. Uh, you do that until you just can't do it, right? But this is something the, the relationship side of it, it's, I mean, yes, you can do it after it all falls apart, but once it all falls apart, if you haven't strengthened your mind, solidified your, your relationship with you and your family, you and God, you and your community, you're going to, it's going to be hard on you, really hard on you. And I would strongly advise you, you know, over the next weeks and months to be doing that. You know, I've, I've advised before that... As, as community, at this point, you know, if you're in some kind of a mag, um, you know, a lot of times mags, they'll meet maybe once a month or something like that. Um, if you're in some kind of a mag, uh, you should be meeting way more than once a month at this point. You should probably be meeting at least and doing things together at least uh, twice a month and maybe even once a week. 
and it doesn't have to be big things once a week. It could be, you know, we're going to meet for a morning Bible study or, or coffee or something like that once a week or every other week or whatever it is. Um, now's not the time to be spending more and more time away from each other. Now's the time to be building that bond as a group. If that's what you have, that's what you need to be doing. Um, trying to also build relationships with people outside your inner circle, but the ones that they may not be in your circle, but you know that they're good people. You know, the mechanic down the road or, you know, the farmer over here that, that you know pretty well and you, you bought hay from or whatever, they're not in your inner circle, but they're good people and start, you know, really kind of building up that relationship, having conversations with them about what's going on. It's what I strongly recommend because I... I, I know I'm going to get criticized for being the, the doomsdayer right now, but I really don't think that uh, there's a very good outlook ahead of us for the next, you know, three, six, 12, 18 months. Um, I, I really don't think it's it's a good outlook. And I really think that, that you should be putting forth your very best effort, even to the point of making sacrifices and uh, for, for whatever, but to to do these things, to get ready, to get your houses in order. You need to be preparing mentally, physically, and spiritually, but folks, you just, you gotta be doing it, or, or you're just not gonna be ready. You're not gonna make it if you, if you don't start really pushing these things. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.